when we stopped going to church and stopped praying and stopped reading the Bible and stopped speaking in tongues and, and stopped acting like a Christian, I kind of expected that my life would somehow get worse or like mm-hmm. change somehow, yeah. you know, because everyone in the church is like, well, without God, you're, you're evil and sinful and you're you can't nothing. do good. Yeah. Nothing happened. And in fact, the only thing that happened is I felt a little less guilty about things. Yeah. Well, Go. okay. Well, now, okay. Welcome okay. to the life after. Uh, this is Brady, like the bunch. Harden with me as always is Chuck, like me. I've, I've got to stop. I, doing I gotta stop. I've got to do that. I did that in high school. <laughs> That's how I did the morning announcements in high school. I've got to stop doing that. And you know, Chuck, like Brady, the like meat. The bunch. Chuck, Chuck, like, like the, the meat. meat. I mean, I don't have it. Chuck, like the Norris. I know I'm nothing like Chuck Norris. I mean, I do have several yeah, black belts. He's against all odds, and you are for all odds. <laughs> And that's where, where the, the Rangers, Rangers gonna, gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we right now? I don't know, man. Um, okay, so I've got a question for Chuck you. Like it, the Norris Parson, but not a Republican. There we go. I like that. Yeah, I can do hey, that. Hey, I'm excited about today. Uh, you know, one thing that we've been hearing a lot about from our listeners is how oh, we're married and we don't know how to is de- that, Are you doing our listeners right now? Is that how yeah, you think about our listeners? listeners? <laughs> Every single wow, what one a of dick, them. man. <laughs> <laughs> we have yeah. religious trauma. <laughs> That's how I think of you. <laughs> When's Jamie Lee I'm Finch going to be back on? <laughs> um, we're completely kidding, just so that's Absolutely clear. kidding. No, but one thing is that like people need to hear from married couples because that's something you and I cannot speak to. Right. Um, and so, I mean, like I can tell you how to get divorced <laughs> after your deconstruction. That, like, I um, can direct you to a great lawyer. What is that? What is that show on Netflix? The girlfriend's guide to divorce. And it's about rich Hollywood women getting divorces. Anyway, it could Sounds be on like, that show. Yeah. No, I couldn't because I'm a poor boy. I'm a poor boy. You're a poy- I'm Arnold a poor boy. boy. Ar- if there's a county in the United States that's the opposite of Hollywood, it's going to be called Arnold. Arnold. Where from. Yeah. Arnold. But okay, let me let me ask you this, and be- before we talk to our guests who are married, and we'll talk about their marriage and how it's been since deconstruction or while deconstructing. Um, where was your divorce in comparison to the timing of your deconstruction uh so i that's a thing right that's a yeah. trope oh yeah 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 that's real that shit's real for sure um i you know what it's it's kind of funny that you say that because they're very very related to each other um and the reason for that is because like get, like as like Everybody who knows me, at least personally, and probably listens to the show knows that I'm like a very sexual person, right? Like, don't don't give me that look, Brady. Well, I'm just trying to figure out, like, how do I say to her, like, like I'm aware, but without sounding like, oh, I'm aware. Oh, I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a boringly straight sexual person, but... Um, yeah, so, and I was, like, aware of that, you know, when I decided to get married. Yeah. So, in a lot of ways, like because of that and because of just like being 22 in a world where people don't get married to 22 like being like getting married was a huge faith decision it was like my biggest faith decision it was like okay god if you're like fucking real which i'm at that point in my life was convinced that he was then this will work this will work out even though i have all of these questions and doubts about it right yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. and like i was you know struggling with my sexuality insofar as any christian does which is not really struggling with it it's just like being normal and being told that you're not normal but um so big faith decision jumped into it like got married and then you know marriage things happened for several years i was married for five years um and my faith losing my faith like sort of came at this time i went through about six months of like where i just was like consciously aware that I didn't feel like I believed anything, but I was deciding that I did, assuming that it would like come full circle. You had the head knowledge, but you didn't. I had the head knowledge, but I wasn't really feeling it. You're not allowed to let me use those phrases seriously. (laughs) That was was sarcasm. We can uh, 
Yeah, I had, yeah, right. But yeah, you're going through it was emotions. A, it was a head thing, not a heart thing. <laughs> Thank you. Know? you. <laughs> and I was waiting for it to be a heart thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, fake it till um, you make it. I mean, I remember fake it being, till you make it. I mean, I legitimately being remember being taught that phrase in church at First Baptist Church of Arnold, where I grew up, was like, fake it part, till you make fake it. Fake it till you make it. Right. Yeah. So um, it kind of came to the, to a head. Actually, I went to a uh, me and my ex wife and a friend took a trip to Europe, and seeing Europe as a like very post Christian culture and especially like very unfundamentalist, like even Christianity there isn't super fundamentalist. Like even their, their conservative movement there isn't super rooted in religious beliefs, shit like that. So, um, seeing that and seeing how much more functional European culture is like riding on an $8 train that was like nicer than a hundred dollar Amtrak. You know what I mean? Just shit. Like, like it was obvious that they have like figured out some things that much younger, stupider America hasn't figured out. Yeah. And I attributed a lot of that to like the interference of Christianity and just like Christianity being so forefront. So I started to deconstruct and then I got home and for one reason or another, it's kind of a long story, but it was like, I realized, I was sitting on my back deck one day, like sitting under this tree that I've done a lot of like life thinking underneath. It's mm-hmm. like where I process things. And it occurred to me that my marriage was going to end unless something like really drastic changed. And we weren't talking about divorce at that point. It was just like, I was like, either, either like we need to miraculously change things about ourselves or this marriage is going to end eventually. Mm. And it was that same moment was when I decided I wasn't a Christian anymore because it was like, <gasps> I like God is not doing anything to interfere in this. And this was my big faith. God's decision. not doing a new thing. God is not doing a new thing. Wait, who's no matter who's, how you spell new thing, <laughs> who's doing it. Okay. That's cool. So, so I mean, yours, yours it was were really like tied the, in it together. It was literally the same moment. I mean, you know, the, the word divorce didn't come up for months and months and I wasn't even the one that, brought it up it was just like i knew in that moment yeah she started just spelling like it out Par- i don't know oh yeah <laughs> d-i-v-o-r jolene, jolene no she has a song called divorce where she spells it out divorce divorce <laughs> get out of here divorce. so mine was okay so with me i i was kind of going through my divorce uh and i was still holding on to the faith really fighting for it going through the spiritual abuse and then it was kind of like the the spiritual abuse that came because of my divorce that pushed the door open and then i just kind of like uh rode that wave like a like i was on a surfboard going through (laughs) through a door it's like (laughs) surfboard through through a door and i'm like i don't believe anymore are you the kool-aid man (laughs) yeah because well no in this scenario the surf wave was coming from inside of a building inside the building going through the door through the door out the building hear me out okay the wave pushed the door open wave but the i wave was being riding the, the wave abuse. i didn't push the door open the wave did but i was riding that same Is wave spiritual abuse fun <laughs> were you <laughs> sorry go anyway ahead. but that's that's how mine was it was kind of like an on the way out but today our guests are a completely different story yep uh because they didn't get divorced Right. Finally, uh, and they have like, their own podcast. The fuck, right. They they have their own <laughs> podcast called Born Again Again. And they are a husband and wife team. So finally, some podcast, you know, host where uh, takes the pressure off of us. The will as they a won't as the will they won't they relationship of Chuck and Brady. Oh right, having this other podcast will where they're they just married, we have less pressure of you and I, right? That feels so good. That's what okay, I feel. You like. want to get a drink Friday? I'm sure. What do you? Let's do it. Right, cool. um, anyway, without further ado, they've had to sit here uh, and listen to us banter, <laughs> Walter, banter Walter, whatever the other Muppet's name is for a long time. Welcome ooh, to the ooh, show, ooh, ooh, ooh. Joe, Joe, and Katie. Hey, or is it Kate? Kate or hey, Katie? Guys. Is it Kate or Katie? Hey, Katie. Katie, cool. Uh, you did it. Thank God. Well. We are going to dive in and get to know uh, Joe and Katie. Can, actually, before we go to commercial, can you guys give us, I don't know, three things for us to look forward to in your story that uh, are going to be <laughs> super juicy? What do oh you got for us? Okay. Um, man, I don't know what we, to choose from. Well, I mean, I, I think. We are. What's that? Go ahead. Sorry. 
Oh, we are former campus ministers. Oh, yeah, oh good some one. time with yeah. Campus Crusade. Yeah, Crew, oh, I guess. Yeah, Bummer. we were interns. Yeah. We had like Bible studies. Ooh. We like, di- discipled kids. Yeah. Ooh, like, all worship. That, that all was that something. fun stuff. We had, yeah. Yeah. We haven't talked about that at all in the show. We haven't touched on, on college, college ministry. ministry. Mm. I feel like that was a doozy. Do, do you have two more off the top of your head? If not, I feel like Camp Scorsese um, is going to be enough to get people to want to yeah, come back. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Um, we can talk about any of the spiritual gifts. We spoke in tongues and we prophesied. We tried yeah. to heal people. I tried to heal a lot of people. Yeah. We and want- um, then we can talk about how we obviously like how our marriage survived because we the did big, actually con- the biggest marriage. Divorce. We talked about divorce. Yeah. yeah. Shit. The biggest mm-hmm. miracle of all. Yeah. Staying together while S- deconstructing. And Christmas. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about that right after this. Oh, hello there, Chuck. <laughs> I didn't see you there. How are you? Hmm? Good. Just uh, editing the episode. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Oh, you commoner and your common talk. I guess I'm what you would say, <laughs> doing not much. <laughs> what is this? Chuck, pst, pst, Chuck, it's me, your pal Brady. I'm practicing patronizing, so I'm working on being more condescending to people. <laughs> Oh, Ooh. do you have any idea where Matt can get some crumpets around here? <laughs> uh, wh- why are you doing this? You know, for our Patreon. We've been asking people to patronize our page, and I didn't <laughs> want to ask them to do something I wasn't willing to do it myself, so I figured I'd get some practice in. Oh, God. Brady, no, that's huh? uh, that's what? not what it means. Oh, no? Listen. Listeners can go to our Patreon page, pick the level you want to contribute. Oh. Each level has special rewards. Okay. Like exclusive life after mini sods. Or not safe for work bloopers? Uh, or like a monthly collection of deconstruction memes. And even personal consultations or meet up with your favorite host, Chuck and Brady? Yeah. Brady. Patreon.com slash the life after. <laughs> I guess even you could find it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Brady, you just took that to. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that's it for the day. I think everybody can go home now. Damn. Wrap up right there. Wow, you had to. You that was not the one you wanted to one up me on, man. <laughs> no, but, but the joke was there, and I felt obligated to say it. <laughs> okay, and we're back. Welcome uh-huh. back. And we're back. Welcome back to the life after. We're this is Brady Harden. That, that uh, last part. I'm Brady Harden. I'm Chuck Parson, and we are here with uh, Kate and Joe from Born Again Again. Yeah. Did you see? How, did you like how I did Kate? Glad to be here. I'm making oh, that's my Kate. New name yeah, now. We're, we're changing it right now. I'm making Kate happen. It's starting today. I'm making Kate happen. <laughs> Kate is mm-hmm. never going to happen. Um, <laughs> will you please? Uh, can you all introduce us to our listeners? Because I feel like our listeners and your wait, listeners wait. are going to have a little bit of an overlap. I think they're going to like them. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're a married couple. My name's Joe. This is Katie. We grew up uh, in super fundamentalist Christian churches in the Midwest. Um, and over the last five years, I guess, five or six years, we've been going through a deconversion process and we're mm. to the point we are today, we're uh, hosting a podcast about it, mm-hmm. helping other people through the experience that we went through as well. Yeah, cool. it's very new. I think we're just talking about a lot of the realizations we had and just how everything seemed so crazy. Like, yeah. I can't believe that we believed this way for so long and just a lot of the things that kind of deconstructed our faith. And that's honestly, that's a, kind of the state we're in right now still is like all the time still we will read something or we'll listen to a podcast and hear one of you guys say something where we're like, oh my God, I didn't even realize that this was something I believe that's affecting me now. You know, like I that, didn't that realize stuff is still that was coming weird. Out. Or like I, just today I was like, I didn't even know that that was weird that we believe that when we were in it. I can't believe right. how everyone else mm. is like, why didn't they tell us? It's like some secret they had. Like, couldn't you guys tell me that it was bad for me to be indoctrinated as a child? Yeah. <laughs> like, I thought right. that was just, I thought my parents were just doing a good job. Yeah. Same. Right. So yeah, our, our podcast is kind of, we're really fresh out of it, I guess. So I kind of feel like in some sense, we still have some ties <laughs> to yeah. the way we used to think about these things. Um, and we're trying to sort of bring that with us as we go through this deconversion process so that we can help relate to other people who are going through the same thing. Cool. I love that. How long have you been deconstructed, Chuck? About to ask. Oh, me, uh, 2015. Nope, 20, February 2014. So five uh, and a half years. I'm like okay. right around five and a half years as well. Yeah, yeah. it happened okay. around when my son right was born. Right around the same time. Uh, well, I, guys, I might be six. I might how long be six. have you guys been like out, out? 
would you it say? It was one year ago, about just about one okay. year ago, when we looked at each other and we were like, I think I'm not Christian. Was it? Damn. Yeah. That's so recent. What did like, you it decide was, it had been at the a same bit time? of a process. Well, it was, there was kind of a specific, like, tipping point or a specific kind of last straw that we, oh, cool. we both oh, okay. like, well, we'll got get, into. We'll get into that don't, tell us, don't tell us what it is. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Oh, no, no spoilers. No spoilers. Yeah. Um, so, I need to say that it actually might have been two years, though. Oh, okay. Oh. I'll tell you okay. something about deconstruction. Okay. Time, Time flies, man. <laughs> yes. What happens? I don't know. What You're happens? Just, well, I mean, it's you start. You, what happens is you start having fun for the first time. So yeah, time starts moving. <laughs> oh my <along>. god! <laughs> so uh, yeah. you know what I really like about your podcast, and it's uh, it's cool that we started out talking about you know how like how long you've been deconverted and how, and how you've been like processing it because. I would, and I don't mean this to sound pretentious in any way whatsoever. This like, happens a lot, Everybody's doing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have to apologize in advance all the time. <laughs> but like, you guys remind me of like, you guys took me to this headspace that I was in when I first de- deconstructed. Mm. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. oh, I remember like wrestling with these things and like, fig- and like looking back and being like, how did I believe this? And like trying to like, I don't know. Yeah. So I, I really yeah. like where your podcast is at because it's not something that. Brady and I can really do anymore because we're just like not in that headspace any sure. like we're more focused on like we're like trying to help people get out as healthfully as possible but we can't really yeah. like engage in the same conversations the same way that people who are freshly deconverted Okay, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. really cool. Like you are I mean like you have an episode of your show where you go through the Genesis story and you're just talking about how bizarre it is and how, cr- mm-hmm. how crazy it is that you ever believed it literally yeah. and like all of that stuff. And I was like, dude, that's so cool. Like I'm so angry about the mechanisms that make you believe that at this point that mm-hmm. I can't yeah. think about how weird it was. You know what I mean? I've, right. I've, I've I forgotten. So I know that, we talk that about that really a lot. Cool. Yeah. Like it's where someday we're going to be at that point where you are now and it's not going to be, all of this isn't going to be as weird anymore. And I guess we're uh, whatever we do our podcast or whatever we're doing in the future it's going to just evolve from there and I'd really I love that you guys are focused on people like helping people get out of it like who are going through trauma I think that's great Thank I'd you. love to do that Thank in the future you. but I think I still have a lot of trauma that I'm dealing with right yeah. right yeah. Well, it's, it's really good to hear you say that uh, that you've related to it in that way because even now we're, we've been talking about how we can feel the, that old Christian thought pattern like slipping away. You know, right. it's, it's weird. I can yeah. like I can feel myself losing the ability to relate to the way I used to think. Some uh-huh. things, some yeah, some things. It. You know, some things are still sticking around, and some things are more persistent. You know, but like maybe yeah. that's encouraging to people listening. Like it slips away relatively quickly. You know, I mean, yeah. after I don't know, pieces of it are falling away. Especially now that we have outlets to talk about it uh, without oh, that yeah, really right. being a thing. Because I know that, I mean, I've talked about it before, specifically the the episode where you interviewed me, Chuck, about, mm-hmm. you know, my stuff in episode five. And I was able to go back and listen to me tell my own story. It was mm-hmm. therapeutic. And so just yeah. having an outlet to talk about this shit is helpful. And what you For guys sure. were saying about before about, you know, Chuck and I kind of get upset at things that might, somebody who's just newly deconstructing may not think about yet the way that i think about it is just an analogy of like that show the the, the movie the truman show uh-huh. so whenever he was mm-hmm. exposed that he realized oh i've been on a television show it was probably easy to get upset at the people the actors that were right around him but then mm-hmm. as he got older and realized how the mechanism worked it's like oh well no ex- executive producers had to right for the show and they had to create it now i'm mad at them because i understand they're part of that cog right. of that machine yeah. and then it's like oh wait but there was all these fucking marketing people who were selling this show so it's like you start yeah, to realize yeah, yeah. the difference so i think like the part of deconstructing is a process of mourning and getting angry rightfully angry at times mm-hmm. at certain people depending on who they were and how they contributed to the bullshit that you know imprisoned us as children and <laughs> as adults yes. yeah for sure <laughs> yeah that. so uh where you guys are from wisconsin you guys are both from wisconsin right yep, yep. okay yeah. cool so what, what was you guys both grew up in church what what did what kind of church environments did you grow up in we had uh, a little bit different backgrounds. I grew up in, I think it was considered a Baptist church, but it was kind of just like a typical evangelical, non-denominational-ish kind sure. of church. Mm. Um, my parents had been going to for their whole lives, and I think their 
parents were going to it for a long time as well. Oh, okay. Um, so I was brought up in that. Yeah, it was it was just kind of like um, generic church that believes in the Bible. You know, that's what they'd say. That's a good right. Bible believing church. Um, <laughs> and they're all about evangelism and all about the Bible. Whatever yeah. the fuck that means. Well, right? The Bible clearly yeah. says, <laughs> exactly. and then everything we believe. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I grew up in that environment. Your Katie's uh, church was different. Yeah, I grew up um, as a Lutheran. I was a Missouri Synod Lutheran, and like okay. every single person in my family was that way. And it's like very, very sin based. Like, I don't know. I I just think <laughs> of my dad. He like really debases himself. Like, it's like being a worthless sinner is like the focus to right. me in my memory of it. Mm. Right, right, um, right. But then when we when I was in high school or college, my parents switched to a non-denominational church. It's pretty similar to Joe's mm-hmm. family's church. Okay. Um, so then we were non-denominational then, I guess. And that's when we met. So at yeah. the okay. time we met, we kind of were both going to, the, our both of our families were going to the same kind of churches. And like in each of our cases, all of our families were Christian. You know, right. So everybody around us was Christian. All the authority figures in our life were all Christian. Yeah. It was just a big... Big Christian hive mind. Party. Yeah. Yes. Big Christian hive mind. I like when, when you said that it was very sin based. I was like, that sounds like fun now. But like, <laughs> it's, right. yeah. Great. I, I yeah. love going to things that are sin based. <laughs> so, so fun. I, I was thinking it's kind of one of the first times we've we've dealt with any Lutheran Lutheranism on this show because I kind of look at Lutheranism. Really? Have we touched we had, on it? Uh, Kendall is Lutheran. <gasps> But yeah. You're right. Okay, you're right. But we haven't, yeah. I, about I look at Lutheranism as like the generation X, you know, is that the ones where everybody mm. around them is fighting, but they're just kind of sitting there not doing anything? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Gen X. Yeah, like everybody's mad at the Baptists and the Catholics. But well, like, first of all, you need to break down your, your uh, dislike of Gen X, I think. <laughs> They don't do anything except like Nirvana. That's like <laughs> what it is. They just haven't been the same since Cobain died, man. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, no, it's it is. I mean, they're they're just different sects of. You said you said um, Missouri Synod. Yeah, Synod, so is that yep. like Concordia is based in St. Louis? So I think that's I think that's the the seminary for that particular branch yeah. of Lutheranism, oh, yeah. which is interesting. There's another Concordia University and it's in, it's in Wisconsin and my uncle actually teaches there. Oh, okay. He's oh, wow. a pastor. Ah, yeah. okay. And it's, I'm, well, it must be Missouri Synod as, as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know the Missouri Synod people didn't really like the Wisconsin Synod people. Oh, people. okay. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. There's like a feud, like it's like Catholic Protestant feud. It was that bad. Oh, it's that bad. I don't know. Well, wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Did they split up Ireland? Because I'm... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, they, they split, no, they split up. They, split they, up they divided Wisconsin into two states. Yeah. Northern. Not many Northern people know Wisconsin. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it is. It is funny. We need like, a real schism, man. We like talk. A real one. We 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 talk about all the divisions in the Christian Church, and we kind of just expect it, and it's kind of like a fun thing that we're just used to. But isn't it kind of bizarre how much they hate each other? Yeah, yeah. It's oh, being yeah. so really weird. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like, yeah, you guys believe like ninety seven yeah. percent of the, the same, same shit, thing. Mm-hmm. and 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 you're killing each other mm-hmm. for the other two Splitting percent. Hairs, man. Yeah, huh. that was a big part of our deconversion. Like, yeah. it was a big question: Why are there so many denominations? And like, if there's a, we're following, supposed to be following the same book, why right. are we all fighting? You know, over this interpretation, right. I thought like if God was so sovereign, He would make us all like like think the same or whatever. You well, because the Holy Spirit would be ch- talking to each one of us individually, totally. and if He's the same source and talking, so He's going to be saying the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah. it right. just didn't but match up with my like no what I was up. reading. Okay, so at at some point, so you guys you guys met each other at this church, right? That your families were both part of in some capacity. Did you, yeah. did you guys get to like, did you guys start dating then or was this, did it happen later? Yeah, so we met actually at school. Our families oh, okay. were going to different churches, but they were like basically the same church, the same interchangeable, yeah. right, right, right. You know, oh, different okay, names, that, different. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we met at school. Um, when I was in college, I was a freshman and you were a junior. Mm-hmm. Um, and we met over Facebook actually through Katie's little brother. And that's a whole separate story, mm-hmm. but we basically met online and right away started dating. Actually, uh, our first, the first thing we ever did together is we went to an university meeting. Yes. Oh, at nice. Our college okay. campus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. University. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, so we were so, like briefly involved with them, but then we switched to crew because like our school was small and the groups crew and university were basically the same people. And I think that yeah. the night that crew was on just worked out better for us. So we just, okay. like, to choose so you just went with yeah. crew. <laughs> right on, right on. Very okay, spiritual cool. decision. <laughs> so, so how did, how did getting, how did you, how did you get involved with crew? What made you do that did you show up on campus and were like i want to get involved in the ministry or did you sort of like get into it one way or the other or like get sucked into it in some way yeah yeah um i when i first started going to college i i was like so on fire for god you know Mm. at that time that was like the peak the peak uh focus of my life yeah okay was trying to be as christian as possible you know Um, so yeah, when I got on a, onto campus, I didn't realize there were even college groups like that. But I right. think within the first couple of weeks, there were tables set up where they were they were advertising for like a root beer kegger or something. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah root beer kegger, um, adorable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, it was kind of natural. It was, I was like, kind of the same way. Was was like, except I was actually I was kind of adrift when I encountered Crew the first time. And uh, sorry, just to be clear, we're talking about Campus Crusade for Christ for anybody that's not. Oh yeah, familiar. <laughs> the name is hysterical because I don't know why you'd want to bring up the Crusades aside from a right. Yeah, but, I know. But like it's, <laughs> but like yeah, it's it's a it is a nationwide uh, college campus ministry program basically, and mm-hmm. uh, just like real brief before we get into your story, like my whole encounter with Crew is that like they were giving away a bunch of like a bag of free stuff outside of oh, the, yeah. outside of the like quad or whatever, and mm-hmm. I was like. I was almost, I was like about to leave Christianity then because I was raised fundamentalist and I went to a fundamentalist high school and I took a worldview class at said fundamentalist high school and I was like very dissatisfied with, you know, the answers that they gave for mm-hmm. why I should believe. So I was like yeah. almost out and then I and then I got this sack of shit from <laughs> from campus crusade (laughs) and it had a copy of blue like jazz by don miller and for some fucking reason i read it and that it just sucked me right back in because it's i mean honestly it's a good book like regardless of what i believe now it's a fantastic book but it's like yeah duh i would read this like cool hippie portland version of christianity and like be like oh i can do this now you mean i don't have to Uh be a republican yeah fuck yeah you know so then i like got way back into it so that's my so fuck campus crusade because i could have been out way earlier but But apparently it's effective and i still have the water real good at tricking people (laughs) yeah Yeah. so anyway yeah is that how they got you all with a water bottle (laughs) (laughs) not quite (laughs) So you, yeah. so you, no, but we, I feel like we got sucked in as well. Um, yeah, like yeah. you, it's the type of thing, I don't know, maybe your experience mirrors this, but it's the type of thing where you go and you're like, oh, this, this is cool. I see this as like a Christian organization on campus. I guess I'll put my name on this form, like to get their emails. That I'm not was sure definitely if I want to or not. Yeah. And then a month later, you're like, volunteering several times a week and doing all kinds of stuff you know they're 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 very intentional and they like they'll they'll meet you and they you know they give you a lot of attention and if you're new and you want a group and you want friends like of course that's what you want you want the attention and like you get like assigned a person who always says hello to you and they get to know you and then they invite you to all the events and then before we knew it we were on the band and we were like leading a Bible study and we really, really wanted to give our lives to God. And we're like, well, this opportunity presented itself. Why not do it? Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, it's maybe not exactly like our church, but it's a really good way that we can share the gospel. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And then we became interns. Like at the end of school, they got us even further and we like started interning with them because like they had a presentation about how this was an opportunity you could you could do after college mm-hmm. oh okay mm. so you did it was this a two-year college four-year college it was four. a four-year college four. so and we did it for the whole time you did it the whole time and then you kept doing it afterwards <laughs> yeah yes oh, and that's I, amazing. I, I was a junior so i did it for like two years joe graduated in three years so he only did it for three years i guess mm-hmm. good Whatever. job good job yeah. joe I know. I did like four, real, real I did four and a half i was real long <laughs> dang it <laughs> You're waiting for me to finish <laughs> So what what is what are the, what are the inner workings of a, of Campus Crusade look like? What did you what kind of stuff did you guys do? Okay, so we we when we were students, we were on the band and we were leading worship and we were doing some evangelism and stuff. But like we had classes and all that, of course. So we didn't have tons of time. 
Um, but when we decided to do it as our like job for that first year, um, it was really eye opening to us how uh, business like everything mm. was, ah, how like yeah. rigid everything was. Yeah, it was so. It was weird. We we had tracks for everything. We had like little <laughs> scripts that we had to read for every situation. Oh we, yeah, yeah. Super numbers based. Like how many people did you evangelize? How many people re- uh, read the sinner's prayer? How many people gave their lives to Jesus? How many people were filled with the Holy Spirit? I don't know. Yeah. And we had to give these numbers to our um, staff people. Right. Yeah. So even at the times. Uh, they were they're bad <laughs> right they were, never, they were never good enough for god okay yeah, 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 yeah. i think, better. I think yeah. everybody feels that way like i don't think anybody ever felt like they weren't oh, just good enough like i was okay. i was i was yeah. pretty good I was, <laughs> yeah. I was pretty good at evangelism i felt natural about it it felt normal for me to bring up this weird shit to like yeah. to strangers no. You're like no nobody <laughs> says that it's no, always like yeah. some awkward like yeah, I felt I always felt shame for not telling enough people or right. I always told myself if I really believed then, you know, if this stuff was true, then I would definitely be acting different. You know, there's always like this weird like gnawing thing in the back of your head that Yeah, for yeah. sure. Especially when you're having to count how many fucking people you had led to a sinner's prayer. Like oh, yeah. God, that would be so annoying. It's stressful. Yeah. And it then was, you kind of feel was. like a cop where you Brady, have to meet your quota at the end of the month. How many people did you <laughs> convert proper? Okay. <laughs> Probably about five, four or five. Five? Yeah. I think I've deconverted more than that. So at this point <laughs> in my life, I think anybody else is just bonus. It's just extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> I've leveled out. And so anybody I get pulled out, oh, I feel de- like I'm yeah, making I'm, a good difference. I am difference. responsible for deconverting lots of people. But some of the people I created were, are monster Monsters, Christians. Yeah. yeah. One uh, works for crew, but I'm actually pretty proud of him. Oh. I think he's not One of them like works for crew. Uh, and a couple are like in the ministry and stuff. And That's one's like a really annoying libertarian I had to block on Facebook. That's, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not proud of that one. <laughs> I'm surprised you can remember <laughs> that you can remember these people. Dude, dude Christian well, and libertarian. That's a double whammy. My thing though, right. like I was shoved in it for so long. These were, I lost, these were everybody that I knew. Like this was my life, my entire family and my friends. And then uh, yeah. whenever I was disfellowshipped and left, like they all just, walked out of my life like that poof gone Boop. yeah man it was fucked up yeah so fucked up so there was a, so there was a, a fair amount of emphasis on e- on evangelism you guys were in the band um you yeah. know it's interesting that you brought up that business thing because i always like <laughs> like as a person that was usually involved in ministry in some capacity i always felt like it, this low-key like quiet duty to keep that aspect of it quiet because yeah. and it's it everybody it's like an unspoken rule that mm-hmm. you don't talk about how businessy it is because mm-hmm. like yeah. i worked mm-hmm. at a christian bookstore and i we had a whole section on church business and if you skim those books it was like very marketing focused very yeah. like John like there Maxwell. was um, uh rainer i can't something rainer yeah, i can't huh? think of his name he wrote a book called simple church where he was basically like hey apple's doing this you know google's doing this like <gasps> let's yeah. do you know and it was basically about like simplifying messages and like making everything easier to look at and like marketing stuff it's just marketing like yeah. just clean surfaces you know what i mean just minimalism yeah. Yeah. marketing minimalism and it's just like this is like silicon valley shit you know mm-hmm. but we're like White Jesus walls. needs us to do this, <laughs> you know, for right. this to work for people to convert or whatever. Yeah. And it's so weird. Yeah, that's a really yeah. weird. Well, that that even started to bother us at the time because, like, you know, it's easy for us to look back at it and kind of criticize it now. But when we were in it, it w- these thoughts we were having were a lot more like just little nagging thoughts we had. They yeah. were right. like, "Oh my God, this is a business." You know, it was like, "This seems a little weird," or "This feels a little weird." Yeah, um, mm-hmm. but I think but another, yeah, I'm sorry. Go coming ahead. out of it now, it, it it really just it's so clear that what they have set up on these college campuses is like a machine mm. to kind of kind of manipulate young freshmen who are coming in who have no friends and they're like trying to make 
they're trying to establish themselves as their own identity and all this, you know, and they're kind of preying on these people who are in a vulnerable transitional stage. Yes. Yeah. And then this whole program is like the perfect machine to just crank out converts. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's it's like a weird they have it, factory. It's like well oiled. Yeah. yeah. Well, when yeah. you were describing it, 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 it is very well oiled because you, you start with the attention bombing. I think it's what they call yeah. it, where you, you know, some, mm-hmm. there's a new guy and everybody gets high on that feeling. Chuck's mm-hmm. talks about like, you go from, I oh, used youth to do group the same thing. Youth yes. group, youth group. <laughs> like I was, I was the new guy at my Being friend's the new youth, guy group, at the youth my group, my junior man. year. And like I said, I rode that wave for like two more years. Like, oh, you guys have already dated each other. Well, here I am. <laughs> yeah. I'm the new guy. It's Brady. Um, <laughs> right. But no, when you're the new guy, you you get that welcoming bombing, that attention mm-hmm. bombing. Uh, I think is the actual word for it, and it's a manipul. It's like an actual manipulative thing that like cults and shit use. And then yeah. what do they do? Is they 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 find people that want to get involved, and they get ways to. So it's not even like malicious, but it's just kind of common sense of like, okay, let me suck you in. Oh, you want to get involved? Now do it. And then you get in a perpetual motion of doing shit, of like, mm-hmm. okay, for well. Sure. I'm in charge of this. I'm going to do this each week or I'm going to be in the worship team. Right. And then you find yourself doing that. They're uh, like, oh, you play drums? You could come you, here every week. Oh, you could <laughs> use, your, use yeah. your gift for Jesus. Oh, use and, your gift. and you fucking yeah. musicians can get away with murder at yeah, churches yeah, as true. long as you can play <laughs> the goddamn ac- uh, acoustic guitar. Because yeah. at the time that I was being disfellowship for my church and everything. It was I, always like the worship leader got a girl pregnant and she got kicked out. Yes. <laughs> Oh, oh my god! Well, like, yeah, we did not experience like, that this, part, but that sounds. Oh, that's, that's, it's, that's a real shit, man. I wish it was. Well, at the time that I was being dispatched, yeah. a friend of mine was Jezebel. cheating on his wife, <laughs> but like the church was cool because he could play guitar, and I'm like, what yeah. the hell yeah, is yeah, this yeah, shit? Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. And another thing you were Need saying, that guitar player, man, about it's marketing, h- dude, hiding the marketing though yeah. is like when you're a worship leader, Chuck. You've talked about this of like you kind of want to hide how you all are manipulating people into having a spiritual moments during a worship service mm-hmm. too. Right. Like yeah. mm-hmm. you knew what you were doing. Yeah. Right? Oh of- yeah, yeah. 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 Well, especially towards the end, like when I was like about to deconstruct or working on deconstructing, it was like, yeah, I like the, like the pastor would be like, man, worship was really anointed today. And I would literally just say, no, we just practice, man. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like, what did you we're play just, we're just good i played guitar and sang and at the church okay. i was at towards the end i was like me and my friend were like the favorite worship leaders so we had a rotation and uh-huh. it was always like me we would just joke during practice like yeah and then we'll sing this part and everybody's gonna cry you know it was just like <laughs> oh my it was God. so like we were so aware of how manipulative it was but we liked doing it yeah. so and we thought it, we still believed that it was important, even we like if we to be thought it was manipulative. Yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. totally manipulative. Yeah. So what were the kind of things really? that like, what were these scripts and tracks and stuff? What did they say? We, we had, well, so we had to raise support for our year. Basically, oh, we like wow. begged all of our friends and family to give oh, us money. Brutal. And then Ew. we gave 12% of that to crew and okay. then the rest of it we got to live on. So mm-hmm. the crew got Ew. more um, than God. Wow. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so we had a track. We had a we had binder. a script for that. We had a binder. Oh, for it. We okay. weren't allowed to like. There was sections written in there where we were allowed to freestyle. Or it'd say like in parentheses, insert personal story. Here. What? You know that kind of stuff. You were supposed yeah. to read the binder. Like go. You had to read everything from the binder, and then that translated to everything in the year. Like we had this thing called the KGP, Knowing God Personally booklet. We had to read it <laughs> word for word to the kids. We got trained on <laughs> the it. Secret they told police. us how we could draw special things in it, or write or circle stuff in it, and that was helpful. And then we had one for the Holy Spirit. It was like a little booklet, like with it was long and boring, and you had to read it. You had to read it all the way through to like oh. a stranger who was like oh, in subway. My. In the cafeteria. Ew. It was really, really awkward. Um, That's we had I had to disciple a girl and you discipled a guy and like that just means one on one basically and we had a binder for that. I had a binder for my Bible study of like which Bible studies I would be going through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all of it. It was it was all scripted out. And like I said, it, it felt like a machine, you know, it was this well oiled machine yeah, and yeah. anytime we would bring this up because we kind of brought it up with like we the rebels. people who were over us. 
you know, and we'd say like, this feels so weird. They, it feels weird me going up to this kid and like reading this weird book to them where mm-hmm. I would never talk to them that way. And they'd say like, well, yeah, I know sometimes it feels weird, but like, we know that this works. This is proven. It's, it's been tested. You know, we know that this works. So we're like, well, okay, I guess. So that's actually why we started, we started getting I want to know what that research church. looked like. Sorry. So, yeah, no kidding. It's just like, oh, yeah. it's been well, it's tested. Just, like, where right. exactly? It just <laughs> means it that, tested? like, maybe because, like, it's, they wanted it that way so you couldn't say any wrong doctrine. They just wanted it to be the crew, oh, like, yeah. way. That could be it and, like, they, yeah. you know, they didn't want, they didn't trust us to say whatever we were going to say because they were so strict. They were scared. We started going to a charismatic church and we were like, we need to pray for people to be healed. And they were like, whoa, whoa, we we don't believe in any, like any kind of thing that you can interpret outside of the core, Jesus died for our sins, you know, kind of thing. We don't talk about here. We don't, we don't talk about it. I'm like, how can you, how can you leave these parts out? I don't mm, know. It yeah. was really frustrating. That's why we kind of, we decided not to do it another year. And towards the end, we were like really, really like depressed. So some of your, mm. your charismatic leaning is kind of what brought you out of crew. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And how did you start to become a little bit more charismatic? I think actually probably because of Cornerstone. I never thought about that until oh, now. Oh, Cornerstone! Yeah. Like you guys Cornerstone were, Festival. you guys were yeah. asking us about that. Yeah, that yeah. music festival. Yeah, I specifically remember one year we went to the Cornerstone Festival at once one July. And mm-hmm. there was a tent there where they had like a lot of somber music playing all the time, and they had people praying over other people. The oh, the, was it the sanctuary, sanctuary, the sanctuary tent, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like goth, yeah. Days, goth prayer the soil tent and thing. The sun. Yeah, uh huh. Where you yeah. could also yeah. get so we, body piercings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wait, I don't remember that. <laughs> not, not lying. Yeah, body piercing, that, silent prayer. Uh, weird music. Yep. Was that by the prayer Dude, Joe, of Joe got his ears pierced there. Oh, I got my ears pierced maybe at Cornerstone. Yeah. Sorry. And oh, you got your ears pierced? The tent. I got my ears yeah. pierced at Cornerstone. Did oh you my God. God. In that tent or was it with the gun in the, in the merch it was, tent? No, it wasn't in the prayer tent. It was in like the merch tent. Yeah, yeah. Like That's dirty, I got my, I got my second yeah. All piercing. four of us might have been at Cornerstone at the same time. Probably. Like, it, like we probably, lost. Like we like walk or we bumped each other. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse, excuse me. And yeah. It, yeah. Oh, I, got an inf- I got an infectious skin disease, like, bact- like flesh eating bacteria at Cornerstone one year. It was the year that we met. And I so I hope I didn't. If you ever, if you ever got one of those, it was probably me. <laughs> my my so. ear got infected right away after I got it pierced there. So well, that's because you, you tried to make me force place. a gauge through it right away. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh my I definitely yeah. engaged mine too early. <laughs> I just signed up. We all into the Salters. We really, I liked the Salters. The Salters? the Salters. Yeah, they were a band. I don't remember that one. They were oh, the, like you weird the Salters, Whoa. like Christian goth hippies that travel around in a vegetable van. Yeah, a vegetable, cool. and they would always van. play a set on the beach, like on the. They oh, had a yeah. stage that and they don't sell their out music. of their van, and they would play off yeah. of their bands anyway. And they don't That's sell cool. their music; they just give it out royalty free. Right, they're interesting nice. to me anyway. Nice. I was yeah. good friends with all those people. Um, but yeah, what so were we talking it about? Two, <laughs> Cornerstone. Oh, Cornerstone. Charismatic, yeah, Cornerstone, yeah. charismatic. Yeah. Okay. okay, so what was yeah. the, what were was we, your charismatic experience at Cornerstone? Well, we we spent time in that tent where there were people like basically. It, it seemed like they were having some kind of experience of God, that experience with God that we had never had before, that we weren't used to, mm. you know. And so it really piqued our interest, and we spent a lot of time in there. Um, and we actually, I think it was while we were going to Crew, or maybe the year before we decided to intern with Crew, we went to that prayer tent that we were just talking mm-hmm. about, and someone like prayed and prophesied over us that we were going to be used in God's kingdom to like help other couples and stuff like that. Hmm. Um, and so it was really powerful. You know, we, we were, I don't know. We were like, we were searching for a way that God was really working and we want, like we were so sick of the business, like rigidity of crew and sure. we wanted to really, really, like really help people. We wanted people to feel like comforted by the Holy spirit. And we found that at Cornerstone. And then I think when we went back from that trip, we were like, we need to find a charismatic church, a yeah. church who believes in this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was something about Cornerstone, right? I mean, like, I feel like a yeah. lot of our listeners probably went at some point yeah. or are familiar with it. And it was just, there was just like an energy there where like you would, mm-hmm. it was like, a, it was like, A, it was freedom from like rigid fundamentalism for sure. for sure. There was like very little fundamentalism there that you would experience. 
And like mm-hmm. B, it was just like a lot of people that really believed what they believed to the yeah. point where it was like yeah. you didn't even see people like trying to smoke or drink or anything. You know, there's yeah. just like this weirdly Christian culture, but without all the rigidity. And it, it was just like really powerful. It was fun. It was yeah. it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. Unlike a lot of church things, it was fun. Right. <laughs> I know. So <laughs> we still really like it. Like I mean, yeah, it, it was great memories. You know, I would yeah, go. Yeah, good memories. If it's still I feel like it probably yeah. was more powerful as well because it was always like 98 degrees and we're super dehydrated and barely slept at all. <laughs> yeah. So we're like kind of delirious already. Everything's hitting so hard. Like, yeah. Wait, yeah. 98 degrees was there? Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, uh, Nick, we, need take, we need to take a break, uh, but we will be right back after this. And when we come back, I want to hear... Uh, what started, what kind of questions you all had and what started to pull you out because I know about some of the questions you all started to ask and they're pretty good. Pretty good questions. When we get back. If you were going to die tonight, do you know where you... Stop. Just tell them about our website. Oh, just tell them to go to thelifeafter.org? Yes, they can go now, even without accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. (laughs) thelifeafter.org we have a blog contact page a link to our facebook page and more all right thelifeafter.org heavenly welcome and back we're back <clears throat> uh okay so we are going to talk about magic powers Hell yeah. <laughs> magic <laughs> powers so you so you got introduced to sorry brady were you gonna no that was it. i've been just, talking a lot this episode so no, you're fine. Okay. I haven't noticed. So, you, I think you're so doing you great. got you got involved in some, or you got a, a taste of charismatic Christianity at yeah. Cornerstone. Yeah. Ooh, what is a taste of charismatic? This a sounds taste. like taste. Just like a taste. Pat no, it's being Robertson's prophesied over for the first sweat time. Sweat or something. It's pe- it's somebody touching you on the forehead and saying <laughs> powerful words until you sweat and cry. You're Dude, not- it's powerful. Yeah. <laughs> like, God, that's that shit's real, off. man. I mean, we've I've, I've been there. You've been. Was that your first? Was that your first like real exposure? Like you never had a friend that was like, "Come to my church," and you were like, "This place is fucking weird." Okay, I'm sorry. Before that, no, we did have that, and I was like super freaked out by people who okay. were speaking in tongues before. Mm. Yeah, and then I s- met a bunch of like young people who seemed kind of normal who were yeah. doing it, and then I was like, "Oh, I guess oh, it's okay." Okay, okay. right. Well, this is cool. Yeah. When it's boomers yeah. doing it, it's real weird. But when, ge- yeah. when millennials do it, it's okay. And it seems a little <laughs> racist when boomers do it because you could really tell their <laughs> racial prejudices by the accents they use. What are, <laughs> what are like, where it's like... <laughs> You hear them speak in tongues like, I think that might be a borderline hate crime, dude. You're like, they're like, shabba, shabba, shabba. Right, it's like, right, okay, it's like, dude. <laughs> lay out the Jafar, please. Right. Thank you. It's oh my clearly God. always like Middle Eastern or yes. African. Always. Languages. Always. Why is it always like that? I've it's made up. About that. Oh, oh, and if they get really yeah. brave, they may add some clicking. And they're it's never like, like, okay, buddy. They're never like, you know, like. It's never Scandinavian. It's always like it's always like from a shithole country. Right, yeah. Vice the bar black You know, it's never that. They're never oh like God. they never sound like Hitler, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was speaking tongues of angels, but the dialect is from 1941 right, right. Germany. Brash <laughs> takana Oh my god, that's so funny. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so what was so you're you're exposed to 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 this at Christianity? You're like, okay, this is maybe not as weird as my last experience. So, what, where'd yeah. you go from there? How did you how did you get involved in the charismatic movement? Um, we went to Cornerstone, oh, wow. got kind of an intro to it, uh, and then. I, we had we had a lot of Christian friends, and some of my friends were more into the whole charismatic thing. And specifically, one guy brought me to this house church Bible study that he was really into. Uh oh. Um, and I remember specifically at one of these house church meetings. I think his name is Sam Hinn. It's Benny Hinn's brother. Oh was no at way! This oh. House. What? Wait. And I was. What? <sighs> That's yeah. wild. Yeah. And I didn't know who it was at the time because I wasn't like I wasn't in the scene, you know. Um, I knew everyone was like, oh, that's Sam Hen over there. But anyways, we were sitting in the in this guy's li- random person's living room, and Sam Hen came up to me, and he grabbed my arm, and he said, the Holy Spirit has an anointing on you. 
and you're going to do great things for God and you're going to, you're going to move mountains and you're going to experience the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I was like, whoa, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my mind was blown. And first of all, this was not something I was familiar with very much at all. But like him saying that really piqued my interest in it. Yeah. Wow. Because I was like, whoa, this is, I guess this is for me, you know. Cool. Mm. Um, <laughs> I mean, there and then is him saying that decided, he decided your your life. There. In, a, in a way. Because he just said it to you. Why wouldn't you go pursue that afterwards? Yeah. He's a res- respected Christian authority and... I was looking for more involvement with God in my life yeah. and this seemed like the perfect thing. So yeah, mm. that happened and I kept going to that house church and things kept ramping up there and all those people were speaking in tongues and doing all kinds of crazy stuff that I didn't know about at first, but the longer I went, um, you know, the more I learned about that stuff. And I think kind of at the same time, I had been just like, we were talking about stuff all the time because we were dating. Um, so you were kind of were just on board too. I mean, it really, it really started to feel like I don't know how anybody can read the Bible and not believe in the spiritual gifts and not believe that God's power was for today. Same, so yeah. like, right. Yeah. So really it was just a matter of, you know, I believed that that was right. And then when I read the Bible, it confirmed it. And so it just kept ramping up more and more until we decided mm. to leave our parents' churches. And then we found a new charismatic church in our hometown. It was right after we got married because we're like, it's a good time to like pick up on a new church. So then we found this charismatic church and they were like, they were like a cornerstone but with all ages to mm-hmm. us. So it was like perfect. Uh, okay. We yeah. loved this church like so much. And we we loved the people from it. They were really, really welcoming. They were real. They see, It seemed like the Church of Acts. We say it all the time. Mm-hmm. Like everybody yeah. was helping each other, all that. Sure, yeah. sure. Cool. Yeah, so yeah. it was perfect. Yeah, the last <laughs> church perfect. I was a part of was like, was very much... Like it felt like an it was an authentic community, which is yeah, like yeah. super rare in church. It's like more yeah, rare in church like than too. it is in the real world. So it's like, <laughs> right. you know, it's like it just felt really. I know what you mean. It like felt mm. it felt perfect in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. right for sure. It was like what I was looking for. You know, in so many ways. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we felt yeah. like we had found our spot, and it felt right. amazing. It felt well, like especially we after knew the rigidity of of like that of crew and that kind of thing like yeah like, well this is definitely not it so when you see something really <laughs> organic and like that seems to like it seems like they're actually interested in what god is and like god they're inviting god to like do something rather than mm-hmm. like telling god how to like do things i don't know you know i sound yeah, interested yeah. now but you know yeah. what i mean no, yeah it's like no, totally it's, it's it's more of a relationship not a religion <laughs> yeah oh my god exactly. yeah no but i know what you're, yeah. say, you're saying because there there was kind of emphasis i think it's the same with all of our stories and a lot of people our age there was an emphasis at some point where we all wanted to have a more authentic church that looked more like acts where people were mm-hmm. helping each other out we're actually showing the power the supernatural power that the Bible is promising that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, you're right. You would read the Bible and you would assume, no, there's no reason that this power shouldn't be here anymore. So yeah. we were proactively looking for ways to find it. Um, but where did things start to kind of, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but where did things kind of start to unravel wow. where the perfect church started to seem like, you know, reality and normal. Yeah. It was just, well, first it started off with just a feeling and I, it was, we were, we were supposed to go to Bible study and we were, we had a time of worship and everybody was supposed to like, to bring something they would say. And it was like a word of knowledge or a prophecy or you would, a, spiritual a, song. a spiritual song and you were supposed to hear from God and bring something and you were encouraged to. And after a few weeks, for some reason, I like had nothing, I had nothing. And, and that's when it really started. I stopped hearing from God and we started questioning things such as the thing with the music. Like I started realizing how emotionally driven the music was. I'd never, ever noticed that before. I wasn't in the band at our church cause I wasn't good enough of a musician. Our band mm. was really good and Joe was good enough to be in the band. But did you realize that the music was pumping us all up. I realized it to the extent that you were talking about earlier, uh, uh-huh. that, you know, if I, I play drums and if I start playing on the toms and I start slowly building things up and build higher and higher and higher and start smashing the cymbals, then everybody yeah. starts speaking in tongues and they start prophesying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I just yeah. did that, you know? Yeah. But yeah, at the yeah. time, yes. you know, that. that being said at the time, I, I didn't really feel like it was me. You know, I felt like maybe the Holy spirit was moving through me to yeah, do that. Yeah. To right. Like, bless the people or whatever. 
But yeah, it was really that Katie was actually the one who first had kind of a doubt that that the <laughs> spiritual songs in air quotes uh, were actually spiritual songs and they weren't just melodies that she made up because she can sing a little bit. Right. That was like oh, the original yeah. doubt, you know, when you, you were saying to me that you didn't want to bring anything, uh, oh, bring any spiritual word at the Bible study because you didn't feel like you could tell if it was God or if it was just you. I thought it was just me. I felt like I was just, I was like, how do we know that we're not all just deciding and making this up? Because mm. we're re- all of us are reading the Bible constantly. We're going to church every Sunday. So in our mind, we are having these thoughts like that are aligned with the Bible. So it's just us. We're just, you know, I didn't know the term at the time, but it, I don't even know it now. Self like um, auto suggestion. What is it called? Like you're meditating. You're like you're self indoctrinating. You mm-hmm. know, like sure. You just yeah. Yeah, but it was that very that was that very first small seed of doubt that really toppled everything else over the next four years. Yeah, because up until we we went to that charismatic church for like three years before any of this happened, and it was oh, great okay. that whole time. It was like we were thriving. We loved it. We felt like this was our home. We were getting more and more involved. Oh, um, and wow. then it was just that one night at Bible study in the car when we were driving home and Katie was like, you were feeling really bad and you shared that you felt like you were doubting if you were actually hearing from God or not. And me, I, I wasn't ready to hear that. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't know what to do with that question. You know, right. I hadn't really thought about that before. <clears throat> that hadn't crossed my mind. And, and it was my job. You know, I was thinking it was my job to just always try to stay as faithful as possible mm. to God and the Bible. And so anytime I had doubts like that, I think I just got really good at pushing them down or something. And it was my job to be Eve. <laughs> I guess. I <laughs> guess. Yeah. In the end. Eve, yeah. I felt I felt like I was a bad wife when I said it. Like, I, I, I had the thought before I said it that I'm, like, being, you know, the temptress or, well, like, not submitting... To the authority. Yeah. Well, you know what the, the shitty thing is, is that I also felt that. And I didn't share that with Katie at the time, but like, I, it, it sucks to, that I felt this way, but I like totally had some sort of resentment mm-hmm. towards you for feeling that way, yeah. you know? Because wow. I, I felt like I know what's going on. I know my place in the world. This church makes sense to me. The Bible is real, you know? And that seed of doubt, I just wasn't ready for. Yeah. Did you all's? Did you have such an emphasis on like being the spiritual head of the relationship? You know, like the yeah. whole like man thing, where you felt like <laughs> the man thing. Well, you can you. There's the thing that like if you're in the ministry and your family aren't believers, then you really aren't supposed to be in the ministry. That's like in Second Timothy or whatever. Oh yeah. So it's kind of like if you're the head of their house and your wife is starting to question, you know, it kind of fucks with your. Sp- spiritual manhood oh, yeah. yeah you know like oh, for sure as if that's yeah. a thing that needs to be protected but right. but no but it, it i think it's kind of a no it's not like a misogynistic like asshole thing of like oh i'm the head so i need to protect you but it's like if if you're a loving husband yeah there's kind of a okay if i take this stuff seriously and she's doubting it i want to protect her but yeah yeah but there comes a point where you realize oh shit she's right (laughs) you know right Uh, that kind of changes perspective of it right yeah yeah totally and what you're what you're saying is spot on i i felt like the most loving way for me to act toward katie was to be a great spiritual leader for her Mm -hmm. you know even more than like being just a great friend or a great lover or whatever you know i i felt like my highest calling was to be a great spiritual leader because that's kind of what mm. the Bible charges you with, you know? Wow. That's what so I like even wanted. that resentment I felt towards her, I felt justified in, in some way mm. because I felt like, mm-hmm. well, this is how any godly man would feel if his wife starts to doubt things, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It's got, it, it was, just, it, it was instantly put a division between you us. on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. It's God making, it was making God, you uncomfortable, spiritually <laughs> uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Do you, that, and that like, so the, I remember that tension because I deconstructed before my ex-wife and we were both, I mean, we were both pretty liberal at that point, but it was like a big deal that we weren't so Mm -hmm. liberal that it was like, oh yeah, that's fine. If you don't believe I'm just going to keep, you know, it was like, it was a thing and it was like a, it was definitely a strain because it was like, I was running with this doubt and I was like, I'm done ignoring this. Like I'm going to run with this. And Mm -hmm. she's like desperately trying to pull me back into it 
and and it was just like we were both like on the surface okay with what was happening but like in, in like beneath the surface it was like a really stressful tense thing where it was like we were both trying to convince each other of something mm. you know yeah mm-hmm. did you yeah. i mean i don't know how long <clears throat> you were doing your doubt thing and you were doing your faith thing but like was was that mm-hmm. sort of a phase where the where the tension started to grow yeah, I think so. In some sense. I, I don't think it was ever so much where you were, Katie, you felt like you were completely doubting and I was completely in faith, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it was just her first, that first questioning of things really threw up like a hundred red flags for me and it really freaked me out. Mm-hmm. But over the, so that happened. And then over the next few months, uh, we talked about it more with each other. And then I started to kind of understand where she was coming from and started to realize like, yeah, this is actually a question I have. How do we know if it's God speaking or how do we know if it's just my own brain? Mm-hmm. Right. And so what we thought was the best thing to do was to like amp up our Bible reading and amp up our praying. Mm-hmm. And we started meeting with the elders at our church oh, yeah. and we started talking mm-hmm. to other Christian mm-hmm. people that we respected, which actually kind of backfired for the Christian side too. Sure. Yeah, because there was one meeting that we had that we remembered recently where with our elders. We really respected them. We really, really respected them. But we remembered that the wife was sharing a little bit about her kids and her daughter especially who doesn't believe in Christianity. I don't know why she brought her up, but she was saying that, you know, my daughter thinks that we're we're brainwashed. And I remember I like remember that that was the first time I was scared that we were brainwashed. That she uh, like she said oh. that, and I was like, "Wait, what if we are?" Like I didn't say that out loud, yeah. obviously, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I I look back now, and I, I kind of like recently remembered that, and look back at that, it maybe another thing that spurred us on whatever this journey is we're on now. Yeah, yeah. right. Like, wait, yeah. go back to your daughter. What else was she saying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, right. I, I, I kind of want to follow her. Yeah. Actually, yeah. just what's her phone contact number? information? Can we get in touch with her? <laughs> <laughs> we just really want to reconvert her. We're, yeah. 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 Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, at that time, we did not want to lose our faith. You know, like, yeah. we were doing everything we could to try to keep it. And, like I said, try, like, ramping up all the Christian practices and being extra devoted and all mm-hmm. that. Like, just really trying to figure out what was happening. And through this whole time, praying to God constantly, like, please give me faith. Because I really want to believe in you. Mm. And I don't. I'm like, I'm having a hard time. So, please help me. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you're telling me I should have faith in you. I need help right we, now. You yeah. know? So we prayed together We prayed stuff. together. We, like prayed in tongues together about wow. it, whatever that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever that means. Um, people yeah. always make it sound like if you left the faith, that Rush, it's... Russian be- tongues, right? Uh, sorry. <laughs> or <laughs> yeah. really heavy German. People always have this thing that if you leave the faith, it's because you wanted to sin. And, and it's because yeah. there's... They, they don't have a category inside of their holy text that says... Some people will want to sin and they'll walk away from the faith. And then they have another category that says some people will uh, examine the things that we claim and with pretty good logic, they're going to walk away from the faith. Yeah. They're, they're not going to mm-hmm. say that. They're not going to create a category for people to exit like mm-hmm. you and I that went through that. And so what you're saying about praying earnestly that God will give you the faith, I relate <laughs> with so much because yeah. <laughs> if God doesn't answer that prayer as a father of whatever fucking analogies that you want to use, mm-hmm. um, for those of us who begged God to show himself and to make himself real or to give us the faith to stay faithful. And then he says, he hears that prayer and his answer is no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a dick. What a dick. I was right? mad. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like aggravating. Yeah. We were really frustrated. Yeah. You know, we, we, so we, th- that happened. We stopped going to church eventually because <laughs> we had been praying so much and like basically just got burned out. We didn't know where else to turn. The elders at our church weren't helping us. None of our close friends who were Christians could help us. God apparently had abandoned us. Mm-hmm. So we, we kind of just stopped doing all of the Christian stuff. Um, because we just felt so, I don't know, we felt split in half in a way. It was like, wow. it felt like we were praying to an empty, you know, praying to an empty sky. Um, for maybe the first well, time in I our lives. I think we felt well. like um, we shouldn't, we don't belong in church. We were like, we don't, we're not good enough followers now. We don't, you know, yeah. we like, shouldn't be here. Step down from like the worship team and stuff because we felt like we weren't 
faithful enough. You know, we, we couldn't be worshiping on stage while the whole time I'm doubting. Like, couldn't wait, fake is this real? it yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, so during this time when we stopped going to church, uh, I had been reading about Buddhism, which was kind of, I don't know why I started reading about that, but I learned a bit about Buddhism and I was like, oh, this is really beautiful. <laughs> Never learned about this before in my life, but this sounds pretty nice. Yeah. We learned about, we watched a bunch of um, little, little movies from Darren Brown. He's like a British um, okay. master of suggestion. Well, he, he has Netflix shit, right? He's got a Netflix yeah. special yeah. or two. And those right Netflix specials are great for uh, someone who's deconverting from Christianity. Okay, cool. They come up um, in our yeah, group so we, sometimes, yeah. Yeah. So watching his stuff made me realize, like, wow, the mind is really powerful, and I can see how I could be completely convinced that something's real when it's not. Yeah. So it was, it was that. It was, like, Buddhism, realizing there are a bunch of other religions that also think they're right. Yeah. Learning about how there's 10,000 or, or 30,000 plus denominations, you know, depending on how you count it. That was a big shock. We were like, yeah. whoa, that seems like that's kind of a problem. It's a little excessive. Um, <laughs> that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'd, I'd say the, the biggest thing that was the most shocking to us, that was the most disheartening to us when we were trying to hold on to our faith, but also kind of unlocked us from a lot of stuff, was that when we stopped going to church and stopped praying and stopped reading the Bible and stopped speaking in tongues and, and stopped acting like a Christian, I kind of expected that my life would somehow get worse or like mm-hmm. change somehow, yeah. you right. know, because everyone in the church is like, well, without God, you're, you're evil and Nothing, sinful. Right. And you can't Nothing. do good. Yeah. Nothing happened. Yeah. And in fact, the only thing that happened is I felt a little less guilty about things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was scary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that, I was so disappointed yeah. when that, when that happened, mm-hmm. it's kind of counterintuitive. Oh, but yeah. I felt so disappointed I get that, yeah. that mm-hmm. nothing happened because it, the realization started to sink in that, oh my God, this might not be real. Right. Yeah. For the first time. Yeah. yeah, yeah and you yeah. start to kind of play you, through your head. Like, you kind of have like a, like a line in the water for God in case, you know, for sure. You're like, totally. for like yeah. the first couple of years, pro- I mean like you guys are like out, but like for me it was like a year plus and like, I yeah. didn't have any resources also. So my deconstruction was longer right. because I didn't have mm-hmm. Chuck and Brady in the morning or whatever, but like yeah. <laughs> I kept a line in the water for God and it was like, all right, if something pulls on that line, like I'll, I'll, you know, I'll reel it in and see what happens. And it's just like, nah, just crickets, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Full on crickets. I really like, okay, so there's an episode of your podcast where I love the way you did this because I never would have thought of it, but you guys talk about God as an abuser, right? Mm. And you mm-hmm. go through, yeah. you just sort of found like a website for women and, you know, that that's like, these are signs of an abusive relationship. And you just kind of yeah. go down the line and you're like, well, <laughs> Shit. yep. Uh, and yep, and yep, <laughs> and yep. And like one of the big things from what that was literally one of the first things that I realized it was one of the first ways that I figured out how to verbalize my frustrations with Christianity was I was like, uh-huh. if God, I would tell, like, I would tell my pastor this and stuff. I was like, dude, if God was a father now, we would oh, take his kids my away. God. <laughs> we would fucking yes. take yes. his kids away. Yeah. Cause he's yes. like at the, on a good day he's like ignoring you you know what i mean yeah. like, yes. like on a bad day all kinds of other shit comes up you know if you while get into the Bible. gaslighting you and yeah. saying oh i'll uh, what father <laughs> when he asks for bread does he give a snake or right. or how about this yeah. like what father <laughs> just doesn't talk to his kid for two thousand years yeah i know right yeah. like yeah. What, yeah that's a good question like dude i would kill for a snake you know like that would yeah, be yeah like give me something, something. Yeah, something. that would be anything right. you know <laughs> show up yeah show up in some yeah. tangible way but it was just nothing you know so it's like which he, is like obviously yeah. now i'm not angry that god is abusive because i don't believe that god exists, exists right or at least yes, not that yeah. god right. you know but the realization of realizing oh my God, he doesn't exist. And then like you guys were saying of playing back in your head, it's almost like the sixth sense. Yeah. Where you play back and you're like, oh, I was alone the whole time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. But like the way that it's I... We- it's weird. I don't know why I keep on coming to M. Night Shyamalan today. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, I mean, let's be honest. The show, but like, movies have like a lot of commentary on. What would faith. the other? What would the other choice be? It would be village? like if we were the kids, like in the village, <laughs> right? And then they went out mm-hmm. and they saw those modern buildings, and then they're like, ah, 
Mama and Papa put these modern buildings here to make us doubt our faith. Oh, do you get what I'm that's saying? So good. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of like right, what it would yeah, yeah. be like is if we just doubled yeah. down with the gaslighting. But no, yeah. we we saw the modern buildings. Right? Oh, something's afoot. I'm thinking we need to do a segment zero where we we break down every M Night Shyamalan movie and how it relates That'd to be deconstruction. So okay, but no, you should do it. But the I happening, listen. the happening. Let's go to the happening for a moment, right? So the trees. The last can, Airbender can, can be about <laughs> charismatic spiritual gifts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wasn't allowed to watch any of these movies, so I don't get any of your oh, references. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, what did you watch? Well, you're, like, like, you're really not missing much. Let's be honest. Yeah, were you in the were you in the salty? What were you into? <laughs> salty. The passion. No, I feel like my family maybe just didn't watch a lot of movies in general. Yeah. So we. I think that's probably just the like, main thing. No, I wasn't allowed, allowed to watch, watch Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that was it. Wasn't too yeah strict. for some reason I was allowed to play Pokemon and watch Harry Potter, but none of the rest of it. Nothing else. I came from a yeah. split home, so I got away with a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, you well, did. we oh, weren't nice. allowed to watch Simpsons, <laughs> I, I but my dad, we caught my dad laughing at it when he caught us watching it. Nice. And that meant we got away with it. <laughs> 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 Uh, um, another thing, another resource that you guys had on your podcast, or that you mentioned in your notes, um, was a Reddit post, uh, a topped Reddit post from uh, ex Christians. It just had a shit ton of questions that mm-hmm. really, I think, people struggle with with their uh, with their deconstruction. I read through that list. Mm-hmm. I shared it with some people because I thought it was really good. Uh, wh- so which good. ones stick out to your head, and what what kind of what is your relationship with Reddit, and how has that been with your deconstruction? We um, we never really used Reddit a ton. Um, I, I don't know until like two years ago yeah. or something. But we I don't know how we got onto the ex Christian Reddit to start with, or the true atheism. I think is what that post is on. Okay, sure. true. We atheism. That's right. That's right. Looking at that toward towards like the end or the the final chapters of our deconversion, we started re- looking out for um, like atheist views on things. You know, because so f- while we were deconverting, a lot of the stuff we were reading was still Christian because we still really wanted, we like wanted to be Christian for the longest time mm-hmm. um, until we just got so sick of doing that that we decided we started need to, we needed to start looking at other things. Um, and yeah, that it was the top post on the True Atheism subreddit that we stumbled upon somehow. Um, and it was a list of 125 questions along with like, I don't know, a ton of different Bible passages that the original poster had issues with. Um, and we read through that list and that was the, I think the first time when we realized that God of the Bible is not loving at all. That was was it. That was it. You told me about it and we were in, we were at home at my parents' house Mm -hmm. and I was like, I don't know, like I can't really say I'm not Christian anymore. And you were like, I can because look at this Reddit post. And then I looked at it and I was like, holy crap, I'm out too. <laughs> and so I feel like that was the end because yeah. Yeah. I couldn't believe how many verses. I didn't care that it was the Old Testament. Like I know that people are like the Old Testament right. is not relevant. Thank you. I'm like, why would you put it in the Bible then? Right. Like, yes. why is it here? Why is it a part That's of That's how text? you learn about so God like, is through right. that yeah. same yeah. book. So like. How could you lift the thing that you get from the book up over the sort? It just doesn't. It doesn't yeah. click with me. It's confusing. exactly. Yeah. So, so it was that all the verses. The guy he did it so well. He organized it by like God condoning slavery, God condoning rape, God condoning murder, sexism, child, whatever dumb things like God killing for dumb reasons. And I was like, holy cow! Like, yeah. And then I was like. The, the devil doesn't even do that much in the Bible. Right. Uh-huh. Like, Thank you. The devil's like a much. great guy compared I'm to God. So the devil's so in the Bible. Cool. <laughs> no, he's a, lo- he's a lion prowling about. D- yeah. Doing yeah, that's not just much. what God says. But he told the Everyone truth. Everyone loves lions, dude. It's just bizarre. Like, right off the bat, the devil comes on the scene, Genesis 1, and he tells the truth, God lies, and then somehow we think that... <laughs> yeah. Because he's a, yeah. Right. Yeah. oh, because he's a talking snake. I would be friend a talking snake before I would. Hell yeah, some weird old well, guy. I mean, it presumably had yeah, legs sure. too. So like, you know, It'd probably be cute. It's like yeah, the Geico like commercials, right? It was the, so cute. It was the, the salamander, a gecko. Yeah. <laughs> he's got that little accent. He's like, hey, you know, if you eat that, uh, you will live, and you'll know more things. <laughs> and you will know more things. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So that that post it. actually that was like kind of the end of when mm. we could officially say I'm not Christian anymore because 
what reading that post did for me at least was um, it made made it so that I felt like even if God does exist as, as he's portrayed in the Bible, I am not going to follow that God yeah. because he is a monster. He's yeah. not worth following. Yeah. So like the problem of being scared of going to hell didn't really matter anymore because I was like, I would rather go to hell go and protest than spend my one life yeah. to worship this guy. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Satan's probably got a pretty good setup down there by now, you know? Well, yeah. there's like a lot of cool people. Down I know there. I've yeah. heard enough gays have been thrown down there that we have made it a pretty nice living arrangement. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's a steady, <laughs> okay, slu- it's a steady flow of queer eyes, just constantly, season after yeah, season. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like, you mm-hmm. got a good group. <laughs> We're ready. Yeah, it we is. prepared a room for you. Yeah, <laughs> we prepared a place <laughs> for you. At Howard, <laughs> it so. looks like a New York luxury loft, but no, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that. <laughs> And a lot, I mean, like, and hell isn't in a lot of music. Hell isn't in the Old Testament, so it's been about two thousand years. That's a long time to like get your shit together. One thing that I find really <laughs> obnoxious is whenever you're trying to discuss hell and um, what the Bible actually like says, and the, and like coming face to face with the cruelty of it, you you start to express that to people, and they're like, "Oh no, no, no! You 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 got it all wrong." Um, yeah. it's not really that it's not really like that. It's like, well, if you read it through this lens or whatever, but, but I think that there's an important point that some of us have to go through where we just stop and we're honest with ourselves and we say, okay, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm actually believing. Am I okay with this? Um, yeah. and, and when you start to be exposed to more of the problematic verses and the problematic things that you're accepting and putting your stamp of approval on, um, just by proxy, it mm-hmm. really kind of fucks with you. It changes a lot yeah, of things. For sure. I know one of the verses that was on that list that, that messed with me a couple of years ago was the Exodus, whatever, where it was talking about slavery. And it says that, uh, you know, you can basically beat your slave mm. near to death, but not to death. Uh, but it's okay because they're your property. And it says yeah, that yeah. phrase because they're your property. And it's like, trying to listen to Christians jump through the mental gymnastics of justifying that sort of behavior and that sort of justification is just, it's telling and it takes the, it takes the bite away. Like you said, I fear hell less because I've read more about the Bible and who God says he is according to the Bible. Right. Like scary hell in the Bible. Like it's like hell in the Bible. Yeah. How scary it is. Right. Sometimes like the one for me was the one with Lot where he oh, sends yeah. his daughters down to be raped instead of them raping the angels. Right. I don't know why I never noticed that before. <laughs> Isn't that the most insane story? <laughs> yeah. The craziest so thing ever. Crazy. And how the gays get blamed for it. I don't understand that either. That's right. really bizarre to me. Yeah. I don't get it either. Right. Yeah. <laughs> gays, yeah. we're not going to rape the daughter, Bible dude. Was... Yeah, right. Yeah, I think they're all right. <laughs> but the angels might. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, so you guys, I I really like the way that you talk about your deconstruction because it seems like it's something that you like experienced together a lot. Like, like yeah. for me, it was like such an and I mean, this is like you know probably why I'm not married anymore and you are, but like it was such a like isolated process for me because mm. I, it was just weird. the timing wasn't didn't line up and it was like I didn't have. You know, I I just didn't, honestly, just didn't want to be, like, a dick and constantly, like, throwing doubt around when my Mm -hmm. ex-wife was not ready to doubt, you know, yet. And I was like, this is something I need to do on my own. I was very much, like, not trying to take anybody down with me, you know. Yeah. So, so like, uh, you went through that together, and you you guys are still married. It's been a couple of years. How's that going? It's great now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's really really great now yeah but like i guess jumping back just a second sure. there was a period of like a year and a half where we didn't talk about this with each other mm. um, okay we kind of just i think we both individually were so confused and totally lost and i don't know for me specifically i my identity was completely a christian you know right. like that was my thing and so I didn't realize it at the time, but essentially my identity was gone and I was just kind of an empty shell of a person for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, we, we maybe thought about it a little bit on our own, but I think for a while we kind of just stopped thinking about it and stopped talking about it. 
and we didn't, didn't talk about it with each other yeah, or with anyone else. We didn't talk and, about it at all. Like, luckily, we w- neither of us were trying to be active Christians, so it just, like, a, it was a topic that we we didn't want to touch because neither of us wanted to say that God didn't exist, and we went through that for a while, like Joe said. Mm-hmm. And we had we had to have a conversation, like, a year after that, like, okay, does God, do you think God exists? And that's when we started talking about that stuff with the Reddit. And mm. we did get to go through some of it together, and we were really lucky in that. But then once we started deconstructing a little bit more and realizing all of the things we had believed, you know, there's so much stuff there that you didn't even know was messing with your head. And Joe, like he said, was full on identity in Christ. And he became like an, em- like the further we got out, like he, you lost more and more of like your identity because you had never allowed yourself to be yourself. Mm, wow. You mm-hmm. only wanted to be a vessel. Same. Yeah. And yeah. so we had like, we didn't know what was going on after like a period of like being like, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. You know, we're, we're doing really well deconverting together. We started there. We started hitting some more issues like that. We, they weren't so easy, like that were more internal yeah. mm-hmm. and we started fighting. We fought all the time, like for no reason we couldn't have like a stable relationship. Mm. And we, we brought up, I brought up divorce. I was the first person to do that, mm. that like free, we had to talk about, is this a, now this is a possibility for us, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, really, it wasn't an option before mm. deconverting. Yeah, right? exactly. It wasn't on the table and now it's on the table. And yeah. It's scary. Yeah. So it's scary. And we had to talk about that and, yeah. yeah, I think in hindsight, it it seems clear that we were just both like really mentally unhealthy right. after living our whole lives in this delusion, you know. Um, and so we were kind of both starting over at ground zero in mm-hmm. some right. in some sense. And it, it was yeah, it was weird. It was, it was like we're trying to operate in the same relationship we've always had, and we like we never fought in the past sure. when we were Christian. We'd never fought, and so you know we're trying to just operate as the same two people, but we're not the same people at right. all. Mm-hmm. And we're trying to figure out who we are as we're going through this. And that's so much to um, go through at one. That's so much at one time, right? Yeah. Like it's enough to it like lot, yeah. do your own yeah. self discovery wow. yeah, for the first time. But like to do that alongside somebody else and to like try to maintain a relationship is that's a lot. That is a lot. Yeah. Right. It, it was, what it kept was a you lot. together? Yeah. I think something that kept us together and we kind of realized after the fact is that when we were Christian, we probably would have said that God was the center of our relationship. But I really feel like super, super deep down, we actually just really like each other. Uh huh. And yeah, that's like probably why we originally got together in the first place. And like the fact that we were both Christians was great. You know, that was like, we checked the box. We're good to go. You know, sure. so I, I don't know, you know, it's, it's hard to say why we kept to, why we stayed together but um yeah i don't know it's we were talking about this the other day we don't we we i have no idea like i feel like we just got lucky we we had to like go through that question of are we together because we were christian and we liked each other or are we together because we liked each other and we're christian Mm. and we like what do we have do we have anything in common because i feel like we were going through all of those thoughts like okay, if you deconvert, Christians will say you get divorced, you know, or if you like, if you don't have Jesus at the center of your marriage, you're going to fall apart. And, you know, without God, you're nothing. And so I was like, is that true? Is that happening to us? And any fight we would have would feel like evidence of that being true. And we would bring it up. We'd be like, is this because we were like, just, we should have been together just as Christians and now we can't be together. And yeah. And I guess the thing that well, I guess the thing that helped us was we were like, we need to individually work on ourselves. Mm-hmm. And we recently, it was actually really recently that we stopped fighting. Right, We had like this awakening where Joe was like, I need to go out of town and I need to have some time on my own. And I was like, great, that's fine. And then I ended up making a pledge to myself that... I would get healthy. And mm. so basically we made a pledge that we're going to meditate for a month mm. and we're gonna, not going to do anything else. Like we're not going to care about dirt. Like, I don't know. We're just going to make one small commitment and we're going to do this. And I don't care if it sounds dumb. Like we're just going to try it. And mm-hmm. like that month of us, it like transformed into us reading books together. And we like, we did more than just what we said. And it was like a turning point in our marriage. Yeah, mm. for sure. What, what yeah. kind of stuff are you reading together now as a couple? 
Oh, we've read all kinds of different stuff. We we I th- I think a lot of the stuff we well, read has been like this. Like yeah, so actually, yeah, leaving the fold by oh, Marley yeah, Mannell. I know you yeah. guys have had her on your show. Yeah. on the show. Who? <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. what book? I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not familiar. Yeah, but so we we were going through all those fights and everything, and we got that book and started mm-hmm. reading it together. And I think when we started realizing, hey, like a lot of these fights we're having, a lot of these weird insecurities we're experiencing, a lot of this like crazy shattered worldview that we're living through right now. Um, is kind of being explained like yes. step by step yes. in this book and it made us feel like oh this is what's happening yeah you know it because bef- prior to that prior to finding her book I guess finding her website we felt like no we had no idea what was going on mm. we were just fighting a ton and like feeling really unhappy and depressed and did you guys feel that way like what what's happening to me kind of thing oh for sure I, I like, mean I like know? okay so my experience is a little bit different than a lot of people's but I was gonna say earlier I really like you said on one of the, one of the episodes of your podcast that I listened to you said uh, my my mentality was always that I would decrease that God might increase yeah and you said after yeah. after a while that starts to work which is like so yes. poignant. Yeah. I love the way you phrase that <laughs> yeah. because yeah, you do, you put, you, eventually your identity just diminishes. Mm-hmm. I mean, it honestly reminds mm-hmm. me of, um, you know, like my, how, oh, I'm trying to figure out a careful way to word this. So I'm, I, uh, I'm familiar. I'm like friends with somebody that recently got out of a pretty, it was like a one-sided marriage, you know, it was like a, it was mm-hmm. a very like, fundamentalist Christian versus God type of marriage where it's like everything has to be mm-hmm. about the one person, you know, wow. and they got divorced yeah. and, and, and this person created space for herself. And it's like, I, before my eyes started to see her as a becoming the person that she is on the inside that was like, so mm-hmm. suppressed, you know? And it was like, yeah. holy shit, I had no idea that you were like this because yeah. Yeah. you've never been able to like, let it, breathe you know Mm. so yeah so it's like there is with deconversion very similar process of like you lose everything that you put your identity into which is you know like an abusive husband like god you know it's just like you Mm -hmm. have put so much of your time and effort and identity into that thing and it's gone and now you're with yourself but you you don't know yourself and you just feel really hollow and just kind of defeated right Right. like you don't know yeah. what to do with your time or your thoughts or your energy anymore. And it's like, yeah, yeah definitely. I definitely went through that. I mean, thankfully, wow. I was like pretty liberal and like into some other stuff before I really deconverted. So I, it was a little bit easier for me um, than it is for a lot of our listeners and like for Brady. Um, but like, yeah, fuck, man. <laughs> it's like it you were you guys were you yeah. guys were meeting yourselves and each other for the first time you know yeah which yeah, is why for sure. we that's exactly it yeah we didn't know it was happening yeah. yeah i didn't realize that i i didn't realize that my identity had been erased right yeah. you know you don't realize that that happens to you because it happens over 20 years of you yep. slowly getting more devoted and slowly praying more whatever yeah. you know and it wasn't until i left that i realized i had been like asleep you know, my real personality had been asleep this whole time. Yeah, just like you said with your friend, I watched Joe blossom. Like, wake like, up. Mm, yeah. yeah, I watched him wake yeah. up and it was really cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I love that mm-hmm. you yeah. guys just said that you think you just really liked each other at the end of the day. Like, when, yeah, that was, <laughs> when you got together. Because, <laughs> and, and that's that kind of leads to a point, because I was thinking about how to approach this episode, because I don't, like, you guys are you guys successfully kept your marriage together but that doesn't make you more successful than people that get divorced going through the same thing yeah, right, it doesn't. right so it's like they lucked out you guys yeah you i mean you got lucky but like even so it's like but somebody that gets out of a shitty marriage is also lucky Hell yeah. you know so it's like yeah Amen. there's no like what we don't the message that we don't want to get across today is that you should try to keep your marriage together if you're deconverting and you're struggling. Yeah. Like that is not the answer. The mm. answer is learn, like make them learn, stop believing, learn who you are. Yeah. Make, make them, them stop re- believing. Print off Reddit. <laughs> Force them to stop. Print that Reddit post off and <laughs> Tape say, honey. their eyes open and make them watch Richard Dawkins videos <laughs> for yeah. two weeks. We laugh. And only feed them oatmeal. But this sounds like it could work. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> the point is like, Figure out who you are, yeah. figure out who the other person is, 
with with the all without all the bullshit and you ask know? if that's compatible still and ask if you yeah. like each mm-hmm. other still yeah and see if you want right. to do yeah. it and if you don't want to do it don't fucking yeah. do it you know yeah, and yeah. like that's totally that's exactly cool. what it was met each other for the first time again right and realized okay this still can work but there was a period where oh. we hadn't met each other yet for the first time again 51st first day it was all up in the air <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly right. no but it, it sucks when you have to re reset your identity and it sucks and then yeah like adding on oh yeah we're still we like our new 2.0s still like each other too ah beautiful yeah you all make me happy because i know i know a lot of our listeners are are going through deconstruction some of them it's looking like divorce may be the thing um and i know that that's got to be hard and you've got the whole verses of like well you know what what are those verses help me out where Um, they were talking about in the new in the new testament like the new church well what happens if you're 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 married to someone who hasn't converted oh then it's like should we stay married to them or not well what happens is you wake up next to empty pants and and a (laughs) pillow print they're gone because they've been (laughs) raptured (laughs) i'm just kidding they got raptured that's what i thought you were going for like um, (laughs) A man was asleep in bed. Yeah. She hears a noise. The sun has come Wait, how's and you've been left, left behind. God, I feel like <laughs> I can't get that tune right now. But yeah, that's what I thought you were going for. All right. Good, 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 good. Um, I, do you all have any marriage advice specifically for our, our, our listeners or anybody going through deconstruction right now? I think the biggest takeaway for me uh, was a shift from caring most about our marriage to ultimately caring the most about my own health Same, mm. yeah. because we, we could That's never huge. have maintained a marriage if we were just two unhealthy people trying to like force ourselves to be together. Yeah. It was only after we had conflict and realized we need to like work on ourselves by ourselves for ourselves that we could come back together and say, okay, look, we're both individuals and we both can like think for ourselves. That's and so good. Now we can decide whether or not we want to stay together. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, Very cool. So yeah. Oh, that's so good. I really appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. And what kind of meditation stuff have you gotten into? Do you have any like top meditation books or something that you all have read like post deconstruction that yeah. you'd be like, yeah, I fucking yeah. read this. I like the headspace app. A yeah. lot. Oh, yeah. I use that a lot. That's what I use for the month and it's mm-hmm. great. Um, and then you have a book you yeah, loved. I, so, okay. A little quick side note. One of the me- things I love the most about not being Christian is that I can read any books and take information from anywhere right? and decide what <laughs> I like. So and what I want to yes. That's amazing. It's like That's libraries. So, <laughs> no matter what you think about this, I read a Dr. Joe Dispenza book who he's kind of into like the quantum physics, like the secret, like the energy okay. you're putting out is what okay. you receive, that kind sure. of stuff. And I don't know how I feel about it. It doesn't really matter. But at the end of his book, um, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, he has like an hour long meditation that you work up to and it's all guided and you pick one thought pattern that you're wanting to get rid of Mm. or wanting to change. And for a whole month, you do this one hour meditation every day and it's around that singular change that you want to make. Um, and it was so powerful for me. That's so cool. I feel like in that month, I had so many changes in my mindset. Like, felt yeah. like it upgraded so many times. He seemed like month. a different person. I was like, wow. I, I like, you know, it's hard for me to tell people to go meditate because it's kind of like a decision you need to make because you, you know, you want to do it, you want to try it. But like, I was like, I feel like you should tell everyone to do this meditation because you actually changed. Like, you mm. seem way more confident. Like, way more yourself. Mm. Like not just like a shell anymore mm-hmm. and it was do you mind really, if i ask really what cool. the thought Probably. pattern you went after was if you don't want to answer yeah. that in the air that's fine yeah okay. no no i'm happy to um i i wanted to change my uh habit of feeling like a victim all the ah. time and i think that kind of comes along with christianity too kind of being under authority and always under god's authority and not trusting your own intuition okay. and stuff yeah. like that and mm-hmm. so yeah. um yeah i didn't want to feel like a victim to my circumstances anymore cool mm-hmm. And it, it helped a lot. Very cool. Mine was to stop murdering hobos. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Wherever, you, it's wherever you're at. Too, wherever yeah. you're at, you know. We got yeah, something for you. Yeah, use it for anything. Just, well, less. Just murder less. Less. M- less murder in general. Have you, yeah. um, have you all come across like Dan Harris and 10% Happier or anything uh, in your 
If you haven't, I highly recommend him. He's talked. Wait, who no. is Dan it? Harris and Ten Percent Happier is a book that he read. He wrote a book on no, a spiritual no. mi- or secular mindfulness. So that was kind of my okay. introduction into like meditation and mindfulness. Cool. And it was cool because it came from a very secular point of view, and I didn't feel like I was like yeah. having to compromise any weird thing mentally. And another thing that Chuck has introduced me to is the Calm app. Calm app. And yeah. I'm, I'm a, I'm, Similar yeah, to Headspace, oh, yeah. yeah, kind of the same thing. Right. Yeah, the McDonald's to the yeah. Burger King. So cool. The other one actually I use a lot is the Sam Harris waking up app. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. His are really good too. And I feel like his are a little more like uh scientific clinical where the headspace mm-hmm. ones are a little more like soft spiritual sure, feeling. Sure. You know, yeah, so it's kind of this yeah. Katie likes the headspace ones better and I like the Sam Harris Dan, and Dan <laughs> and Dan Harris. Harris, you know? Harris. And then Dan Harris, <laughs> the ten percent happier guy, is gonna be like a good balance between the scientific side and like Okay, so Um, we're about to wrap up but katie did you have we didn't specifically ask you for advice for our listeners oh yeah since we're here well um like a good christian wife i agree with my husband (laughs) 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 and that's it for today guys no i actually actually really do do a yours in a spiritual song i because i took that month to meditate it's really hard for me to do that kind of stuff like I don't know what it is, but if someone suggested to me, I'm like, no, I'm definitely not doing it now. And that's what happened. And I struggled with it for a while, but I like don't regret it at all. I thought it was kind of like, uh, what is it going to do? Like, I'm just stopping my thoughts. Like, it seemed really dumb. But um, but I I really like needed it. I'm the type of person that was like constantly in my head, and mm. I feel like the meditation really helped me. So working on yourself, um, and I feel like that's the easiest way you can do it at home. If you can afford it, I would go to a therapist. Like mm-hmm. get just Fuck do yes. something for yourself. I think as a Christian, you're mm. you're always like I'm being too selfish. You know, right. I can't love myself, and you know the Bible is where I meditate on, and and it's not it's not helpful. Mm. You know, yeah. I mean we know right, yeah. yeah. But definitely work on yourself. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. I think some people need to be told, treat others the way you want to be treated. And then the other half of us need to be told, treat yourself the way you treat others. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. For sure. I can yeah. see that. For sure. I needed to and do And yeah, there it. might yeah. be a generation where one of those was really important and didn't need the other. But goddamn, we're part of a generation yeah. that needs to hear both sides of that. Yeah, right. For sure. Mm-hmm. Mm. Very cool. Well, self- guys. Oh. Hashtag self care. Hashtag self care. Get that house just yeah, exactly. totally. Dude, <laughs> all about it. Thank you guys so much for being on the show. This is so much fun. Yes. I really like talking to you guys. Yeah, so much yeah, fun. This has cool. been amazing. And I'm really excited about you guys yeah. taking off, and I know you all are going to grow. I'm prophesying over them. Oh, God. You, you all are going to do great things. This is new prophecy. You all are going to do great <laughs> things, uh, destroying the kingdom of the Lord. No, but I, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. you're yes, doing great Jesus. stuff. It's and a and devil prophecy. The moment that I saw you all were producing content and, and the kind of content you're producing, like, I want to get you on the show and I wanted to get you in front of our listeners. So thank you all so much for coming. Really and, appreciate um, I'm really looking forward to see what all you all make. Hell yeah. Yeah. Of thank course, you so yeah. much. Thank you guys. All right. Y'all yes. have a good one. Have a good night. And thanks, thanks you everybody too. for listening. Uh, we have a few things. We have a Patreon that you can contribute to, and we do stuff on there. Mm-hmm. And uh, we also have a secret Facebook group. Um, where Perfect for deconstructing. Perfect for deconstructing. Safe space. No Christians. No nagging you know, There are Christians. No fundamentalists. Well, okay. No fundamentalists. God, yeah. There's a few. There, yeah. Yeah. There are Christians. Bring your husband. Bring your wife. Nobody's going to try to talk you into being a Christian. That's for sure. So, there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Join. If you join. <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, you can find uh, their pod, uh, Joe and Katie's podcast, oh, yeah. Born Again Duh. Again, uh, anywhere you get pod. I think, you know, Born it is 2019. Again. Nobody needs a name off where you can get a goddamn podcast. You all where, know where to find them. Wherever you get your podcast. Just get them wherever you get your podcast. You're listening to podcasts right now. You know where to wherever find them. Wherever you it. got this from. Just, get just go back from. to the fucking search. search. Press that little magnifying Jesus glass. Christ, just and search. you say, Born Again Again. You, you don't even have to use words. Twice. You can push the little fucking. <laughs> Microphone and just say it. Born but, again again. But dick. <laughs> too tired. To Born do again it. again. They okay, also have a really good blog and uh, website. So yes, uh, yeah, check it out. And and also we have S- a under decent, the same name. Born yeah, again and, again. And, and then if you just subscribe Born to rate, again again review and, and all that. Okay. Well, thank you all so much. Remember, remember, if you don't go to church, church, Sunday is just the second Saturday. Saturday. Deuces. Bye. What is wrong with us? <laughs> <laughs>